Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video. So as you guys know, I have been borrowing this 2019 Porsche Carrera T from a good buddy of mine named Jeff. Uh, he was gracious enough to trade me my truck for his Porsche for the week. You guys know that Porsche is something that I am considering moving up to uh, and him being gracious enough to lend me this for the week feel what it's like just to kind of live with it every single day. I even got a good chance to wash it up and spend some time with it in the garage and everything. So it has been an absolute pleasure owning this car for a week. And I tell you the truth, it really, really surprised me. Uh, I have been considering a few different cars. This was one of them. Um, but my really main focus on a Porsche was a 997, an older generation, simply because the prices on the 991s are pretty crazy right now. Now, after spending some time with it for the week, uh, it's really, really got me scratching my head. Um, so what I want to do is go for a little drive, kind of discuss my thoughts throughout the week and what I think of this car. And honestly, is it something that I really want to chase? You know, there's a lot of other cars that I would like to experience, but this is definitely one of them. So let's get in the car. Let's go for a little drive and uh, let's see what I think. I will say this car attracts a lot of attention, more than my STI, which is crazy. <laughs> in my initial impression video, um, I went over quite a few things about the specs of the car. And being that it was my first day and obviously very new to me, there's a few things that I kind of mixed up. First and foremost, the wheels, uh, they're not 1920, not staggered like a GT car. They're actually 20s all around on this one specifically. Also a Carrera T, you're not able to uh, spec out any other Carrera this way. The Carrera, that's what made it actually really special is that you were only able to get a Carrera T with these specific options. You couldn't get a Carrera, you couldn't get a Carrera S uh, with all this stuff in here. Now this also has an LSD, a limited slip differential, which is awesome. Um, and the seats, these actually were uh, an option for a 991. Uh, but these, my buddy Jeff actually bought these from a guy who had them in a GT2. So that's kind of where I got confused there. Now, also another thing, uh, the headers actually, they're not just basic headers. Uh, I did mention that they were Klein headers, which honestly sound fantastic. But what makes these actually special and what really opens these things up is going catless, as well as having these headers, which is the equal length headers. Now, you guys are all familiar with equal length headers with me, with the Subarus and everything. So. I'm very familiar with the whole entire idea of it. And what these equal length headers actually do is it actually gives it more of a GT car sounding, which honestly, I think uh, this is what that car needs. I've heard these cars just stock headers and they sound okay. It sounds like a vacuum cleaner to be completely honest. But with these Klein equal length headers, these things sound fantastic. Now I will say these seats look fantastic. They are pretty comfortable, but for my size, I'm six foot about 172 pounds or so. Um, my back, the lower back section is, it's kind of, it dips in. So it's not as comfortable as they could be. Honestly, I would prefer my Recaro Sportster GTs in this, um, but I am using a small back pillow that's actually made out of the same material, the seats, uh, on my lower back, which is helping a lot. Um, as much as I love these seats, I still think I would rather get the Recaro Sportster GTs. Now, another thing, uh, Jeff, he has track pads on it right now which are obviously meant for the track, but in the summer when it's really, really hot, they're not that bad, but it is cooling down. So anytime you do stop, it's pretty loud. It sounds like a school bus. So I'll give you a little example right now. There you go. <laughs> so it's not so bad. Obviously people look at you like, you know, you're driving this nice car while you're brake squeaking, but hey, whatever, I'm driving a Porsche. So my first impression getting into this car Obviously, when you drive anybody else's car, when you drive something new, something that always happens is you get overwhelmed. There's so many buttons, there's different you know, feelings, you don't know where anything is, the clutch is different, um, but I, I, it's so weird. I got in this car and it just felt right. I just felt like I was, I've been driving this car all along. Obviously, it took some getting used to of where like the AC was and stuff, the buttons, but honestly, everything, you know, where you look for it is where it is. It reminds me of like an iPhone. You know, it's just very, very practical, very user friendly. Uh, and I love that about this. It's just so easy to drive. Now, I always mention that the STI clutch is not the easiest car to drive when you first get in it. If you've never driven one, 
Even for experienced manual drivers, I've seen people stall MISTI several times. I've even stalled my own STI quite a few times just because it's it's still hard to get right. I mean, obviously I've gotten better at it over the years, but even so, getting into this car, the clutch just felt right. Like it just, all the catch points and everything. Uh, it took a little getting used to getting going into the first and second when you're on it. But overall, it just, it felt so good and so easy just to drive this car. Now it's really hard for me to think of a Porsche and think turbo. When you think of a Porsche, you just think of naturally aspirated, high revving, great performing vehicle. And when you get in this car and you start hearing the turbos, it kind of throws you off a little bit. However, I'm not hating it. <laughs> I gotta say, it sounds amazing. I mean, honestly, I really give it up to the headers uh, to make it sound this good, but it's very usable power. It is twin turboed, so you get that low end power just for around town. There's no turbo lag whatsoever. When you wanna get on it, it just goes like crazy. Uh, and I've been driving it in sport, which is like kind of like the hot boy tune or the hot boy setting, which is a lot of the crackle pops and everything. But if you put it in sport plus, which I did, it actually closes the valves, but it gives you all of the power. So it's actually even faster than what I've kind of been driving in. And it's pretty, pretty insane. But honestly, I prefer the valves open and those. <laughs> Now, it did take some time getting used to the rev matching, because um, obviously the STI doesn't have auto rev matching. Uh, so it's super easy to do it, obviously. You just put the clutch in and it does it automatically, which is great, because you don't have to worry about it. Although, I still prefer doing it on your own. I'm not sure if there's an option to be able to turn that off. You may be able to code that out. Uh, but either way, it's still a cool thing to have. You can even rev match down into first if you really wanted to. Uh, you know, obviously when you're coming to a stop or slowing down, you don't want to put in first now. Now, the big question, would I replace my truck or my STI with a 991.2 Carrera T? For the truck, no. I don't think I could do that. The truck, to me, is way too practical for my lifestyle right now. I have three kids, so being able to put them in the back and just having the space as a homeowner as well is so practical. Plus, I love having a car that I can just drive through any type of weather. If I had this as my daily, granted it's more than capable if you put snow tires on it and everything. Uh, and to be honest, I'd probably go with the 4S, which is all wheel drive. Um, it's more than capable in the snow, but driving this through a Northeastern winter is, uh, I, it would kill me to get this thing beat up with all the salt and brine on the road, all the things getting kicked up and everything. Obviously, if you had the means to be able to have this and like, a couple other cars, then that makes sense. But for me, it just doesn't. I'd much rather keep my truck. Now, this is, I guess, the main question. Would I replace my STI with this? Probably. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anybody in their right mind would rather keep an STI over a Porsche Carrera T. Everything about this car is just fantastic. You really feel engaged while you're driving this car. You feel like you're a part of it. It really captures that Porsche Motorsport. Um, it's just everything about it. It just makes sense. Now the STI, my STI specifically, is fantastic. I love that car because of its old school tech, because of its you know driving feel and everything. You feel every bump in the road. The steering is mechanical. It's just a great driving car. But as you get older and as you kind of experience new things and you know you get into a different point financially and, and you just want to live life and try new things, sometimes changing over from an STI to a Porsche is the right move. And yes, for anybody wondering, I always drive barefoot when I can. If I'm wearing flip-flops, I always take them off. So yes, I'm driving barefoot yet again. Now having the truck as my daily, I wouldn't want something, I guess, so practical in a way where, you know, there's back seats and everything. I feel like I'm able to kind of explore new options since I have the truck. And what I mean by that is a lot of doors that open um, since I have that opportunity to drive the truck every day, I can look at other cars that I necessarily wouldn't look at. Anytime I was buying a new car, I was always looking for something super practical, four doors, something that can handle all types of weather, you know, insert the STI. So, you know, I don't need to do that anymore. I don't need to necessarily look for a car as practical. I can get something that's two doors, rear wheel drive, and even two seats. I don't need something as practical as the STI as I once did. The reason why I'm saying that is because I have been considering some other cars that I necessarily wouldn't consider. 
one of which is a Cayman GTS. Uh, that car, to me, it's naturally aspirated. There's no turbo or anything. It's kind of the true Porsche heritage sound and feel. Uh, it's 394 or 95 horsepower, something like that. You can get it in a great manual transmission, which comes in a six-speed, not a seven-speed. So a Cayman GTS is definitely something I'm considering as well. Also a Cayman S as well. Those cars are fantastic, just not as much power as a GTS. Personally, I think the GTS looks better with uh, all the little things that you do get with it. Uh, I am considering a 997S. Uh, I would love a GTS, but honestly, the prices of cars in general right now is insane. Now, a 991 Carrera T right now, you're looking, you know, over 100 grand, um, which is not bad considering what you get. Now, another car that I'm considering is a uh, BMW M2 Competition. Um, I think that is a fantastic car and one of the better modern BMWs that have come out in a very, very long time. The uh, BMW M2 CS as well is fantastic, but those are fetching over a hundred grand now. Again, those cars were like 70, 80 or so when they were new. So now they're over a hundred. It just, it just doesn't make sense. So I don't know. I'm kind of thrown for a loop. I'm not sure what I want to do. I'm a hundred percent certain that I do want to keep the truck. Um, and now more so it's just kind of debating if I want to keep the STI or sell it and get into something like this. Now me being a car enthusiast and just the way that I am, um, you know, all these cockamimi schemes are going through my mind like, okay, if I sell the truck and the STI, I can go out and get a GT3, but that just doesn't make sense whatsoever. Uh, although it would be a lot of fun, I think I would be cringing inside having to drive that year round in New Jersey in the winter and everything. So, I mean, we do have the Telluride, but that's my wife's car, so I wouldn't want to put her in a tough spot. So I really, really do think the truck is going to stay 100%. Um, and now it's just me kind of battling back and forth. I don't want to say battling, but figuring out back and forth of, you know, what I want to do. Is the STI something I want to keep forever? Do I want to sell it and trade up into a, a Porsche or a BMW F2? I do think that the M2 is not going to be as, I don't know, enjoyable as a Porsche, but still it's a good kind of step in the right direction into a really, really true, fun, driver-oriented kind of car. While still not hurting the wallet too much, you can get a really nice, clean, used, under 10,000 mile uh, M2 comp for like mid 50s, 60s or so. So it's not too bad. And that's kind of where a Carrera S is, a 997 Carrera S. Uh, a base Carrera, 991.2, is kind of in the same price point too. They're like 70, 80 or so. Uh, but I really haven't found too many of them that really kind of piqued my interest, so. Otherwise, what is not to like about this car? This car has been fantastic. Daily driving this thing. I put my kids in the back to go to the bus stop and everything, going to the gym. I have been driving it more than I drive my STI lately. Um, so that kind of says a lot. But overall, it has been such a great experience. Again, I want to thank Jeff uh, for literally lending me his $120,000 Porsche Carrera T for the week. Uh, he has my truck, which obviously is no comparison in terms of fun <laughs> and obviously dollar value. I was thanking him over and over again. One of the things that he said to me that kind of resonated was, I want other people to experience the joy that I experience when I drive it. And to me, that kind of just, it was such a cool thing to say because I'm exactly that same way. When you're a kid and everything, looking up to all these people getting all these cool cars, you know, you always think like, how can I drive that? How am I able to even sit in one? And meeting some really cool people that, you know, allow you to sit in it or take you for a spin or something like that. You know, that, that stuff always resonated with me. I have so many stories about that when I was a young kid. Uh, one of which was a 1995 Dodge Viper. It was blue with uh, white stripes. You know, the typical looking Viper. I saw it on the road, I was looking at it, and the driver, you know, he's like, hey man, do you wanna sit in it? I was like, yeah, and it was like one of the coolest moments ever. So him kind of saying that to me was just like, that is so cool, I hope I can get in a position where I'm able to drive such cool cars, granted I know the STI is very cool, um, but you know, that I'm able to do this, and just kind of lend my cool cars to other people, and let them experience what I experience on an everyday basis. So again, thank you, Jeff, you're crazy for lending me this car and allowing me to rip it. I'm actually gonna go home, fill it up with some Shell 93 uh, and give it a good wash for you so it's nice and clean and full of gas uh, when you come and pick it up. Let's go ahead, wrap up this video. I'm gonna head over to my spot, get out of the car. We can round up uh, my final conclusions. 
All right, guys, so there is my conclusion on this car. Absolutely loved my time with it. Honestly, I wasn't even thinking about getting a 991 simply because of the prices. Uh, and honestly, I really don't feel like I'm uh, deserving of such a nice car. I don't know what it is about me. I don't know. It's just kind of the uh, father in me, the husband in me, trying to be as financially responsible as possible. Uh, but the 991 is seriously a special, special car. Um, this car being tuned at 470 horsepower, it literally is the perfect amount of power for the streets. Uh, it's enough to have fun, but not absolutely terrify you when you're driving it. You guys have heard this car, just how insane this thing sounds. Lots of pops and lots of cracks and everything. You can turn them off, obviously, with the different modes, but this car has been an absolute blast. Now, yes, it is really, really hard not to consider a 991 when thinking about a Porsche. Uh, these cars are just absolutely so practical for what they are. I mean, it's got rear seats. Granted, they are a little small. I have a friend, he's actually a YouTuber, Tommy L Garage. He has the same exact car, it's in yellow. Yes, this is daily car. He uses it to haul his kids around and everything. So it is a very, very practical car. So that's all I got for you guys. A huge shout out to my friend Jeff for lending me this car. Honestly, I don't know why I've been blessed with such nice friends to lend me their cars for uh, you know an extended period of time to experience and be around. We had the G80 M3 for a week. We had this for the week. Um, so hopefully we can get a few more cars so I can do some testing and just live with them and see what fits the bill for me. So I hope you enjoyed the Porsche videos. Hopefully there's gonna be more to come in the future. I definitely, definitely would like to see one in the garage, no question. It does look very, very good next to the STI. I will admit that. But as for this one, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions at all, be sure to ask them below. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.